Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, welcome to the class of uh, CS103 uh, offered by FCSE at GIK Institute. Uh, I'll be talking about arrays and strings in this lecture. Uh, in the previous lecture, we have basically talked about uh, basics of C++, evolution of C++ programming and pro other programming languages. We've then talked about uh, some um, something about the input and output in C++. We then we've talked about uh, 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 control structures in C++, namely the uh, uh, selection structures and the repetition structures. We have then talked about uh, the user-defined functions and which was then followed by the user-defined data types and stuff. Uh, so now uh, I'll move on to the concept of arrays and strings, which is uh, chapter eight uh, of, of the uh, whole uh, book. So let us begin with chapter eight. Uh, which is on arrays and strings and then we'll, we can talk about the uh, the uh, source code and the other examples etc for chapter 8 at the end of this lecture so without further ado let's start with the uh, chapter and the learning objectives of chapter 8 so in this chapter we will learn the reasons for arrays why are arrays useful and why are they needed we'll explore how to declare and manipulate data into arrays We'll understand the meaning of array index out of bounds. This is a particular error that we observe. Whenever we observe this, why do we get this array index out of bound? We'll learn how to declare and, and initialize arrays. We'll become familiar with the restrictions on array processing. How does it differ from the uh, simple data types? We'll discover how to pass an array as a parameter to a function. We'll learn how to search an array. We'll learn how to sort an array. We'll become aware of auto declarations. We learn about range-based for loops. We learn about the C strings that are slightly different from the typical string uh, data type. We'll examine the use of string functions to process C strings. We'll discover how to input data into and output data from a C string. We learn about parallel arrays. We'll discover how to manipulate data in a two-dimensional array. And then we'll learn about multi-dimensional arrays as well in this particular lecture. So, uh, what is a simple data type? Well, a simple data type is a variable of these type, which can store only one value at a time. A simple data type can store only exactly one value at a time. And if you change that, the value will change. However, the structured data types are the data types in which each data item is a collection of other data items. So, a structured data, data type is basically a collection of many other uh, data items. So uh, one item can have multiple values. If you can access the sub items or the other data items stored in, in the data item, in the structured data type, you can actually access uh, the value of that particular data item from it. So the structured data type is slightly different from the simple data type in the sense that it contains multiple items. It is a collection of multiple items. An array on the other hand is a collection of a fixed number of components, all of the same data type. An array is nothing but a collection of uh, multiple other items uh, and the, those are fixed num in number and they all have the same data type. Uh, a one dimensional array typically is a components of an array that are arranged in a list form. So you can actually, this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth in a particular line, in a straight line. If you can uh, define the components uh, of an array that are all uh, of the same data type and they are of, of fixed number, that is what we call a one dimensional array. So how do we declare a one-dimensional array? The simplest syntax for declaring a one-dimensional array is like this. The data type of the array, name of the array, and followed by the number of, uh, by an integer expression. This integer expression is the number of components or uh, parts or uh, the, the, uh, the number of data that are going to be stored in this particular array. So an expression is any constant expression that evaluates to a positive integer for sure. So this has to be a positive integer and cannot be negative. So how do you access the array components? The general syntax here is that you access the array components by using the array name, index exponent, and followed by, uh, then you've got this index exponent, which is called the index. So this is the index. So if you want to access an, uh, an array, uh, you need to give its name and the index on which that particular component is lying. So the index expression can basically be an expression with a non-negative integer value as well. Uh, Non-negative means it can start from zero and go on till n minus one, where n is the uh, number of uh, elements in the index, uh, in, in the array, as declared early in the previous slide. 
So value of the index is the position of the item in the array. So whichever position you want to index, uh, to access, you can use the uh, position here. And with that, we can access the particular component. These bracket braces as they are called, and I've mentioned in the previous lecture as well, are called the array subscripting operator. Uh, the array index is always starting at zero and going on till n minus one, like I said before. So for example, if you want to access, uh, you, if you make up a list, like this, this is the command with which you can initialize uh, an, uh, an array of type integer with 10 components. So this forms, the name is list, and this is now a list, an array list with 10 elements, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It has got 10 elements, each is of type integer, and if you want to access it, the position is mentioned by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. For example, if you put, in the sixth element, which is at uh, position five, if you put the value 34, this is how it's going to be. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So similarly, if you put something into the fourth component, into seventh component, into sixth component, et cetera, we can actually do this. So for example, in the, sixth, in the fourth component, the value is now 10. In the sixth component, the value is now 35. And now if in the fifth component, you can actually put a sum of these, so this will be acting like 10 plus 35, which is 45, and 45 will then be placed into the sixth element, which is at position five. So how do you process one dimensional arrays? Well, there are multiple ways to process one dimensional arrays. One of the ways is to uh, basically use some basic operations on a natural one dimensional array, like initialization. Initialization is, is exactly the same. Inputting data, outputting data stored in an array, and finally finding the Largest or and or smallest element of an array. So there are multiple operations that are possible. Each operation requires the ability to step through elements of an array. So you need to basically move through the uh, array all all at at a time. Uh, and this is basically what is the best thing about a loop. So a loop actually accomplishes uh, this particular function that you can uh, move through or step through the elements of an array. So for example, if you are uh, use these declarations, so this is an, a list uh, or this is an array of type integer and of size 100 integers, and you have got an int i, you can use a for loop to access array elements. For example, you can start with the for i is equal to zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus, and then see in uh, list i. So in this case, you're getting input of 100 elements from the user and inputting them into the element of the list or the array declared here. Uh, however, there's a typical array that you might get and that error that error is what we call the array index out of bounds. Uh, notice one more thing that this one is strictly less than 100. So it starts from zero, goes on till 99 and does not go on till 100. And that is exactly how you can access these things. However, if you try to access the 100th element, this is the array, error that you get. So the index of an array is in bounds. If the index it is in bound, that is, it is uh, correct. It is correct. It is right. If the index is greater than zero, uh, greater than equal to zero, and index is less than equal to array size minus one. Notice this minus one here. So if you try to access the hundredth element by using array a name and hundred, it's going to give you a, an array index out of bounds error. And uh, if it is, if you beyond go beyond or below this particular index position, you're going to get the array index out of bound error. In C++, there's no guard against indices that are out of bounds. So if you try, you, it allows you to access indices that are out of bounds, but then at runtime, this is going to give you an error that, you know, this index is not accessible. So arrays can be initialized during declaration simply by, uh, the declaration is really easy. So by initialization, while you're declaring the, the array variable, you can simply use, for example, double sales, this is equal to a list of each values that it can contain. So this is one way of initialization. In this case, the size is determined by the number of initial values in the braces. For example, one, two, three, four, five. So this one contains five particular values, all of type double, and the size is five, yeah. So uh, similarly, the statement uh, list 10 is equal to zero is going to declare an array of 10 components and initialize all of them to zero. The statement int list 10 is equal to 8, 5, 12. It now has got 10 elements, but the first three are going to be initialized by 8, 5, and 12, and all other components will be initialized to zero value. Uh, 
However, there are some uh, restrictions that are placed on array processing. For example, the aggregate operation, that is any operation that manipulates the entire array as a single unit is not allowed on arrays in C++. So if you want to, uh, for example, uh, assign the same value to, um, if you want to add uh, uh, a value two to each uh, member as a whole list, uh, it's not allowed to do it in a single uh, form. So you cannot simply write, for example, uh, uh, and for example, we have a list, which is my list, which contains five elements, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, and we have an uninitialized your list five. I cannot simply copy your list into my list or my list into your list by just using this particular operator. This is not allowed because this is saying, use this list and this list as a whole or as an aggregate. Instead, what you need to do is you need to do it index by index. And for that, we know that we can use a for loop, which can copy each value of my list into your list by using their indexes to access them and then this can be stored using this particular side of the uh, equal to operator. So this is some restriction you cannot actually use an aggregate operation however you need to use an index by index operation to store or to retrieve values. Uh, arrays are passed by reference only and cannot be passed by values so if you are passing an array you can never ever make a duplicate copy of it and hence arrays are passed by reference only we cannot use the symbol and ampersand when declaring an array as a foreign parameter. So you, you, uh, if you uh, want to declare an array as a foreign parameter, we do not use the symbol and because by default it is an and form. Similarly, the size of the array is usually omitted. Uh, and uh, even if it is provided, it is ignored by the compiler. So for example, um, the value function, uh, func array as parameter. So this is like a function array as a parameter which will be passed and it has passed two functions, uh, two arrays. We notice that the value of the, or the size of the, uh, the array is not passed and we just mentioned int list one like this and double list two like this. And in this we can pass uh, two arrays. However, since it is by reference, we know, and there's no ampersand here. So remember, this, these brackets are going to serve that this is an array and we don't, uh, we'll just really pass by reference and we don't need to put an ampersand sign over here. So this symbol is not going to be used. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, like, let's say, I need to come with the right pen. Yeah, so the ampersand sign here will not be, uh, will not be declared over here, as you can see. Uh, if you do it by reference, you usually have a M percent sign over here. However, these braces are serving uh, as an M percent. So this makes sure that actually this one is being passed by reference and not by passed by value. The reason for that is if you pass it by value, you are making a duplicate copy. And uh, in duplicate copy, the mem next memory address is not accessible. However, in, in, if you pass it, pass, pass it by reference, you're passing the memory address of the current member of the starting uh, value. And then the next one you can access actually by just uh, adding, uh, you know, one to the index uh, of, of, of the list. So uh, um, another thing is to declare constant arrays as following parameters. Uh, if you declare a constant array, this can prevent a function from changing the actual parameter when passed by reference. So if you, declare uh, the following parameter as constant like this for example example int x bar in uh, x brackets constant in y brackets int size x int size y this basically means that the y uh, uh, array will cannot be changed and it will remain fixed however you can change x so uh, if you pass by reference the only issue is that whatever changes you make will be made to the original uh, array as well uh, however, if you want to prevent that from happening, you can pass it as a constant int like this. So, informally, you declare in, in the formal way, uh, way you declare the parameter as constant int y brackets. And in this case, this y will not be allowed to, allowed to change. If you change it, it's going to give me an error that this is a constant parameter and it cannot change. However, if you change a parameter, uh, change a value of in, uh, in this particular uh, array. Uh, these values will be reflected in the original code as well. So even outside the function, you can see the changes done to X there. However, there are no changes allowed in Y, although Y is declared as constant over here, but passed as a normal uh, simple int Y, as a simple array at the top. Uh, you, that array need not be constant. However, this array uh, will be constant. Uh, 
so the base address of an array or the memory uh, location uh, is the base address is of an array is basically the address of the first array component or the memory location of the first array component so for example if list is a one dimensional array its base address is the address of list 0 right so you need to you can get the address of list 0 it's the same as that of a address of the list so when an array is passed as parameter the base address of the actual array is passed to the formal parameter so it's just a base address which will be passed. However, uh, you need to remember that C++ does not allow functions to return a value of the type array. Uh, it only allow, uh, gets the address of the first component or something, but it will not allow you to uh, return a value of type array whatsoever. Uh, so C++ actually allows any integral type to be used as an array index. So you can use any uh, array index to uh, uh, refer to the uh, you can use any integer type to uh, refer to an array index so this improves the code readability for example let's say that you have declared an enum paint type which has green red blue brown white and orange and yellow values then we have a double uh, paint sale which can can contain seven elements and here you declare a, a paint uh, by the type paint type so for paint is equal to green we start with here paint is less than equal to yellow so we go to the last point paint is equal to static cast paint type paint plus one so this is the one that comes from the enum declaration and we've seen that in the previous lecture uh, paint sale paint so paint sale we can see is basically a double variable which can have uh, seven values we identify that <coughs> basically paint sale uh, paint and in case the paint is green so one is basically zero two is basically red uh, or, and so on so just start from zero as we already know as well from the uh, enum uh, declaration done earlier so this is like paint sale zero is zero paint sale one is also zero paint sale two is also zero and then in, similarly we can do paint sale red red is basically one so paint sale one we can increment that value by 75.69 this is allowed and in this case what we have done is we've used the array indices to increment a value that is already stored here right so uh, in this way, we are basically saying that red, green, blue, etc. can all be used uh, as an, an index because we know that these are num numerals. Although we cannot have direct numeral additions in the uh, in the simple or enum data type, but by using arrays and by using these indices, we can actually perform some additions into the corresponding values. So there's, there are other ways of declaring arrays as well. So for example, you can declare that there's a constant int number of students and here we have declared an array test scores by number of students. So we've used a constant in variable here. We could use a constant in size equal to 50 and then basically type def double list size, right? So type def is basically uh, the definition of this as, as an alias, right? So, and then we can use list your list and list my list, etc. So this is like declaring uh, two lists or two uh, arrays. And remember, when you use a type def operator, this basically means that uh, now, wherever I'm going to use the name list, it will be a double of this particular size. So this is like saying that um, uh, this may, this whole construct together, if we read it together, this means that I'm now creating my, um, a list that is uh, uh, named my list. It is basically of, this is an array, of size of double data type and it has size 50. Similarly, your list is an uh, is a list again by using type def, which is an alias here. I'm creating double uh, an array of uh, type double and of size 50. So your list is also an array of size uh, type double and size 50. So uh, this is a very clever way of uh, you know declaring arrays. Uh, this is slightly more complex. But the thing is, by using type defs, we are kind of simplifying our uh, stuff. Otherwise, it would simply have been double your list bracket 50, double my list bracket 50, uh, and bracket close, of course. So this basically is exactly the same thing. However, this is done in a more complex way. Uh, and that is the one that I've mentioned here. This is slightly uh, also more um, safe way in the sense that uh, number of students will always be the same. So you can use the same uh, uh, size at various places for different areas. 
searching an array for a specific specific item is usually done in a sequential order or se sequential search manner, which we call the linear search method. We search a list for a given item. We start from the first array of the element. We compare each element in the array with the value that we are searching for. And finally, we continue the search until either the item is found or uh, we cannot uh, find any more data that is left in the list. So you search it element by element and that's how it works. And this brings us to the topic of sorting. Sorting is a very interesting topic since uh, uh, it is used in a lot of different search and sort is, is kind of uh, one of the most common uh, um, operation that is being performed in a lot of different uh, tasks. Uh, and one of those algorithms which we can use now for sorting is what we call the selection sort, which rearranges the list by selecting an element and moving it to its proper position. Uh, so the first step is that we find the smallest element in the unsorted portion of the list. We move it to the top of the unsorted portion by swapping with the element currently there. We then start again with the rest of the list. So this is a very simple procedure. However, there are these steps that you need to understand uh, for sorting and in particular for selection sort. The first step is to find the smallest element in the unsorted portion of the list. Then we move it to the top of the unsorted portion by swapping it with the element currently there. And then we keep on doing uh, the same operation with the rest of the list. So for example, and this is something that you need to do on, on paper as well. Here is a list which contains 16, 30, 24, 7, 62, 45, 5, and 55 as its elements, right? And this is an unsorted list. On the other hand, we are, first of all, we identify the one that is the smallest element. In this case, uh, we identify it as five, right? So this is the smallest element. If we have identified, we then swap it with 16. And hence, now, once you swap it, we have got five, which is the smallest element for sure. But the unsorted list is now between 30 to 55. We then find the next smallest element, swap that with the next uh, element, so seven with 30. 30 becomes here, seven becomes at the top. And similarly, this process continues until the, the whole list has been sorted out. Uh, you need to remember that C++ 11, the version 11, the latest one, it allows us to declare, uh, out, to use auto declaration of variables and data types does not need to be specified at the time. So for example, you could use the word auto num is equal to 15. And when you use the auto num, this basically means that it will try to evaluate if 15 is a integer or 15 is a double or 15 is some other data type. And based on its data type, it's going to assign these values to, to num. So auto is allowed. And uh, for example, the other thing is uh, we are allowed to use the range based for loops. What do I mean by range based for loops? Basically, for example, we have a list uh, called list, right? So all you need to do is uh, sum is equal to zero for double num in list. So it basically says that each element num in the uh, in the array list, you can simply use sum is equal to sum plus num. So in this way, even the indexing is kind of uh, not referred to, and we can directly use the iterator uh, num in list. Uh, so each element of list is now called num. So for each element, which is num of type double, you can simply use it like this. Uh, however, notice that uh, using auto is slightly new. You'll use, uh, you'll see that in a bit of code and you need to understand how the word auto works for C++ 11 similarly. When you are talking about the uh, iterator based loops here, so these iterator based for loops or range based for loops are supported in the C11. If you are using an older version of C, uh, you will not be allowed to use the auto or the uh, double, uh, you know, or, or the iterators uh, for, for a list like this in a for loop. And hence, you need to be very careful when you are using uh, these particular commands. These are only accessible in C11 and beyond but not the versions of C++ that were before. So another characteristic of a, uh, an array is what we call the character arrays or C strings. A character array is an array whose components are of type character. Uh, the C strings are basically the strings that we have used so far are again, null terminated character arrays. So uh, for example, if A is the character, A is the C string A, and A represents two characters. So this is basically two characters. This is not just one character. You need to remember that, right? So this is two characters. One is A character and the other is basically backslash null. So this is the ending character for a string, C string, 
right? So this is a simple character with single quotes. When you put a double quotes, it basically becomes a C string. It will have, if the length of this is two, where the first one is basically the character A itself and the second one is the null terminated character. For example, if you name character name 16, uh, since C strings are null terminated, its name has 16 components, the largest string it can store has 15 characters. So this is something about accessing a character array. And if you're trying to store an, a string into a character array, you need to remember that the last index is always occupied by a backslash null. And uh, the rest of the characters, that are 15 characters can then be, if the string has length 16, one of that goes to backslash zero and the rest of the, them, that's 15 uh, characters can be stored, can be taken out from that string. If you store a string whose length is less than the array size, the last components are usually unused and they will not be stored. Uh, but this is possible that we can store a string uh, with length less than the array size into the array. Uh, size of an array can be omitted if the array is initialized during declaration. Of course, if then if an array is uh, is, is uh, declared as character name uh, brackets, we you notice that we have omitted the size, and this size can then be calculated from John backslash null. So the array the this declares that the size of the uh, uh, name uh, names name array the of type character is basically five. So this declares an array of length five and shows the C string John in it, John backslash null. The useful string manipulation functions are str copy, the string copy, the str cnp, string compare, and str length for computing the length of the string. So again, this is something that goes on with the array because these are C strings. And uh, you need to remember that string manipulation functions always have an extra backslash null at the end. So the length always includes an extra one. Uh, when you're comparing strings, both need to have, you know, backs, both should be ending with backslash null to be comparable. Similarly, while you're copying each element from one to the other, you are going to use the str copy function. So for string comparison, we know that uh, C strings are compared character by character using the collating sequence of the system. For this, we can use the function strcmp, which compares two things. So if you're using the ASCII character sets, for example, air is less than boat, air is less than Anne, Bill is less than Billy, and hello is less than hello. Since this, you can see the small h and capital H. Here, Bill is of smaller length than Billy. Air starts with an A match, but I is smaller than N, hence this is true. And similarly, A is less than B, so air is less than boat. So how do we read and write strings? Well, most rules that apply for arrays also apply to C strings, which are character arrays by themselves, ending with the backslash null. That's the only uh, difference between a C string and a uh, character array. The aggregate operations such as assignment and comparison are not allowed on arrays. And similarly, the aggregate operations are, however, aggregate operations are allowed on uh, the input and output of C strings. So if you want to uh, declare a variable of C string, you can actually use aggregate operation uh, like we did it for John earlier. That is a slight difference from the uh, declaration of uh, arrays where you had to explicitly specify each element. Or if you use a character array, you have to specify each character element specifically. Here you just specify the string and it will be stored into the uh, corresponding array. So for example, if you use a C name uh, for string, it will store the next input C string into the name. So it will uh, name is a C string here and it will be allowed to use a C string. To read strings with blanks, we can use the get function. As you remember, if you input, input two uh, names, for example, the first name and the last name, it was not possible to store them in a single string. However, uh, if you use a scene.get function, this allows you to store the next M characters into string, but the new line character will not be stored in string. Uh, uh, and similarly, if input string has fewer than M characters, reading stops at the new line character. So whenever you get a new line character, the reading will stop. For example, see out name outputs the content of name on the screen, and this is the way you can output strings. Uh, the extraction operator here continues to write the contents of name until it finds the null character. So until it can find the first null character, it will continue to write out the name. If name does not contain the null character, then the string out, strange output may occur, and you may find find really strange things here. So the name here has to be a C string and not a uh, a character array. In that case, it's going to continue to read 
and output that part from memory adjacent to name until a backslash null is found. So even other memory spaces that are adjacent to null will be outputted with this particular scenario. So uh, how do you specify input or output to files at execution time? Well, user can specify the name of an input and or output file at execution time by basically something like this. So if stream in file, if off stream in uh, out file, character file name 51. So here we declare a character array of the type uh, file name. And we assume that it can have 50 characters long with a backslash null as the last character. We see out enter the input file name, right? And then we get the, the file name from the user. And finally, we can then open the use this particular variable, which now contains the file name to open the file, right? So in file dot open file name in file is your input stream. And then you can open the user, get it from the user. So this is a very particular use case, which a lot of us and a lot of you are going to use in the project as well. So this is really important to know. Uh, the argument to the open function must be a null terminated string. So it, it accepts a null terminated string and not a, a simple uh, character array. If using a string variable for the name of an IO file, the value must first be converted to a C string before calling open. So how can we convert a, a character array? Basically, we can simply use the string str var dot c underscore str where str var is a variable of type string so you can convert it to a, a character to a c string by using the c underscore str function and this has to be performed before calling the open function that you do for uh, input so another concept is that of uh, parallel arrays parallel arrays are two or more arrays that are uh, uh, called parallel if their corresponding components hold related information so for example, int student ID and characters course grade 50, declare both of them with 50. So in each student ID, you can have a course grade. For example, A has a course grade of two, three, four, five, six. B, uh, sorry, the student ID two, three, four, five, six has a grade of A. Eight, six, seven, two, three has a grade of B. Two, two, three, five, six, which is a student ID has a grade of C and so on. So for each student ID, you have got a corresponding grade. And these are called parallel arrays uh, because uh, they have the same number of elements and they hold related information to each other. So uh, after a parallel arrays, I think an, a concept that is very useful and you might be using it uh, in particular in matrices and in linear algebra a lot is that of two dimensional arrays, which is a collection of a fixed number of components of the same type arranged in two dimensions. Sometimes we call them matrices, at other times we call them tables, uh, right? So again, wherever you want to use a matrix, uh, it's the same as uh, using two dimensional arrays, uh, which again is a, just a collection of uh, some components of the same type, uh, but arranged as rows and columns that is in, in two dimensions. So how do you declare them? Declaration syntax is exactly the same as that of an, a typical array. However, in this case, you have got uh, two braces, uh, two set of braces, one for uh, the first index one and the other for index two, right? Index one and index two are, two are expressions in the same way are basically positive integer values that specify the number of rows and columns in the array. So number of rows and number of columns are defined by these two <coughs> components. How do you access these array components? For accessing a component in a two-dimensional array, you need to use the same format that you use for single one-dimensional array. However, in this case, we have got an extra pair of braces with the second expression where in, uh, in index expression one and index expression two are again expressions with positive integer values. Actually, these should be non-negative integer values. So they can have zero and zero as well. And this specify the row and column position. So for example, we can say sales five, three. So this is in the sixth and in the sixth row and fourth column, it's going to store the value 25.75. So here we see, so this is the uh, sixth row, right? And uh, fourth column. In that particular place, we are going to store the value 25.75 by using the previous operation. So you need to kind of understand what goes on when indexing is used in an array. Uh, Two-dimensional arrays can be initialized when they're declared as an array is done as well. So elements of each row are enclosed within braces and separated by commas. So each row wise, you can kind of specify the uh, value that is to be stored in the, uh, in the array. And uh, 
the element of each row is enclosed within braces and then separated by commas. All rows are enclosed within braces then to, separate, to define the, the individual element or the individual matrix. Uh, for number arrays, unspecified elements are set to zero. So that is only possible for number arrays. Nothing is done in the case of character arrays or in other cases. But if you're using the number arrays like uh, double or int, etc., then anything that is unspecified will be initialized by default to zero. That's the positive thing about initializing matrices that uh, if you initialize them by default, every, every number matrix will be initialized to, or every number, uh, every element of the number matrix will be initialized to zero by default. Uh, similarly, enumeration types can also be used for array indices, as, as we have seen before, and they can be used for array indices of two-dimensional arrays as well. In this example, we see that, you know, constant in number of rows equal to six, constant in number of columns equal to five. Here you have got a car type, one, two, three, four, five, six. You've got a color type, one, two, three, four, five. And then you've got an in stock, for example, number of rows, number of columns, you can use that. So this can be used as six, five. So for example, if you want to share that the number of folds and number of uh, white folds are basically, uh, however, they are many are in stock, you can just use the in stock. So remember, this is a two dimensional array now, which has a number of rows defined by, uh, by this particular six number of rows and five number of columns. So if you want to store uh, the, the number of white folds, you can simply use uh, Ford, which is basically the car type as rows. Remember, this is a six element, so we can use one. So this is accessible at one and uh, index one, but position two. So yeah, uh, since position starts at one, but index starts at zero. So this is at uh, index one. And then the number of columns index is uh, basically uh, three. So at one, three, it's going to store the value 15. So the number of white fours are 15. And that's the way it is. Going. It can store each and every element. So how do you process, process a two-dimensional array? Uh, well, there are many ways to process a two-dimensional array. Uh, the first way is to process the entire array as we have done before. The second is a row processing, process a single row at a time, or the, the other way is the column processing, which is process a co single column at a time. So in the way, if you want to process each and the entire array, you're going to process each individual cell at a time. Uh, if you call uh, a particular cell uh, value as, as the uh, value of each individual element, then that is the um, uh, processing entire array using the cell values. Then you can basically extract a row and then from that row, which is an array itself, uh, is a one dimensional array, you can actually access the individual elements and process them like you do for an individual one dimensional array. Similarly, we can do it for column processing as well, where you extract one column and that column is then again a one dimensional array. And then we can uh, process it using algorithms that are very similar to processing the one dimensional arrays. So each row and each column of two index array is a one dimensional array itself. And then hence the same processing technology that we've used for one dimensional arrays, the algorithm and the other stuff can be used for the two dimensional arrays as well by extracting a one column at a time or a one row at a time. So for example, if you want to initialize the row number four or fifth row to zero, well, the row is equal to four. And uh, in this case, all we need to do is for column is equal to zero, column is less than number of columns called plus plus, right? The standard way to access, uh, 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 to use a for loop. And then here, all you do is matrix row, row is fixed to four, so matrix four, call is equal to zero is going to initialize everything in, in matrix uh, in the fourth uh, or fifth row uh, in, in at index four, but fifth row of a column to zero. To initialize the entire matrix to zero, or you, you can use a nested for loop like this for row is equal to zero, row is less than number of rows, row plus plus. Inside that you have got a for column is equal to zero, call is less than number of columns, call plus plus. Matrix row call is equal to zero. This is going to uh, initialize the entire matrix to zero. So similarly, you can use the same uh, nested for loop, etc., for printing the or outputting the components of a two-dimensional array. In this case, for loop, nested for loop, and then you see out end, L at the end of this. So this is uh, some uh, manipulator setting, and here this is the actual output followed by gaps. So you basically, for each row, you get gaps. But as soon as you end a row, uh, at the end of the row, you'll actually output this so that the next row starts from the next line and so on. So uh, for example, to input into number uh, row number four, which is the fifth row, you can use this command. 
a single as you said first you first select row uh, to four that is uh, index is four but this is a fifth row itself you know the uh, the index starts at zero but the position is at one so for call is equal to zero call is less than number of columns call plus plus and for each element here you are accessing matrix four in the column and that is going to be input into the uh, corresponding uh, uh, cell if you want to input data into each components you need to use a nested for loop again right so this nested for loop basically ensures that for each row and for each column you need to input a value into the corresponding cell so you can perform another function for example if you want to sum by row to find the sum of each uh, row number 4 sum is initially 0 row is 4 and all you need to do is sum is equal to sum plus matrix row which is 4 here matrix 4 in column the column is being varied on by the for loop here at the top similarly you can sum by column as well in this case the thing is you start the loop by four column and then inside you have got sum is equal to 0 for each row and then sum is equal to sum matrix plus row and then finally you output see out sum of column call plus 1 remember the one that we are accessing by call is start with 0 but the actual column is call plus 1 so you need to increment it by 1 and that is equal to the sum and we end the code here similarly to find largest element in each row uh, we can use the uh, following code for row is equal to 0 so we iterate over each row and uh, inside here we determine the largest element this is the starting element of the uh, of the of that particular row and then we can use a for loop starting from one and going till less than number of columns uh, and for if that largest element is less than the next element we just replace it by the rest uh, the next element and finally once the for loop is complete we actually get the largest element in that particular uh, row and the largest element in row row plus 1 is largest so how can we pass a two dimensional array as a parameter to functions well two dimensional arrays are again passed by reference as parameter by reference as parameters to function where the base address is passed to the following parameter the two dimensional arrays are always stored in row order by row order what you mean is uh, in terms of rows so if you access the zeroth element it's going to be the zeroth row uh, if you access the first element of the array it's going to be the second row <coughs> in other words um when you are declaring a two dimensional array as a formal parameter you can omit the size of the first dimension but you need to give the size of the second dimension anyway and the other thing is that a two dimensional array is always treated as a um, uh, as an array of arrays that's what i call it an array of arrays what i mean by array of arrays is that you have got a lot of arrays that are combined together to form an array if you look at it this is what forms a, an array of arrays uh but the thing is all these arrays here all the members of this array are basically of the same size this is what a two dimensional array ensures similarly we have got another thing which is we call an array of strings an array of, array of strings is basically a two dimensional array in, in 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 the sense that it's basically an array of strings so an array of c arrays so strings in c++ can be manipulated using either the data, data type string or character arrays like we say it's the c strings on some compilers the data type string may not be available in standard c++ for example that are non ansi uh, iso standard c++ in those cases the string data type is not available and in that case you need to declare your own arrays of strings uh, so to declare an array of 100 components of type string well string list 100 can be used so this declares a list uh, which is an array of type string and it can store 100 strings the basic operations such as assignment comparison and input output can be performed on value of the string data type of course the basic operations which are available uh, for string can also be performed on this list this array uh, the data in list can be processed just like any one dimensional array alone and exactly that's the beautiful thing about this so for example uh, if you want to copy uh, what is stored uh, if you want to copy snow white into list 1 all you need to do is use str copy function uh, give it the variables list 1 so this is the second uh, element of of the list and uh, if you store it you are actually going to store the values snow white ending snow space white ending with a backslash null into the corresponding list 1 uh, which is your character array 
Another way that you can declare a two-dimensional array is to use the type def to define a two-dimensional array type. For example, you define constant in number of rows, constant in number of columns, and then you define table type. Uh, and you can simply use table type matrix to declare uh, an array of 20 rows and 20 columns uh, by the name matrix. Uh, you, and that then you can use matrix onwards for uh, wherever you want to use and declare and initialize, etc. Instead of using this long int table type number of rows, number of columns for multiple uh, matrices. So uh, a mul uh, from two-dimensional arrays, you can actually extend it easily to multi-dimensional arrays. This is just an extension to n dimensions, an n-dimensional array, a three-dimensional array, a four-dimensional array, two-dimensional array as well uh, can be declared or uh, can be seen as a collection of a fixed number of elements arranged in n dimensions, where n is greater than or equal to one. The declaration syntax is very simple. Data type is equal to array name, int expression one, int expression two, and so on until int expression n. So if you've got n dimensions, you need to give n braces and declare n sizes. To access a component, again, the method is the same. You need to provide the index of all n uh, dimensions by and use the array name before it to declare, to access this particular component. So um, we're not going to go into detail here, uh, of course, uh, for uh, getting the indexes right, for getting these values correct, we can actually use the array name uh, and use the corresponding indices. Uh, the thing that we need to remember here is that um, for uh, uh, getting these indices, you can easily use the, the, the for loops in an n-dimensional, <coughs> excuse me, so in an n-dimensional uh, um, array, uh, you can actually use the nested for loops. You need to use n for loops to access these. Uh, when you use n for loops, the code becomes really slow as you probably study the complexity in maybe in a later course or maybe in uh, discrete structures. You might go through the, you might have already gone through the discrete, uh, the complexity of the algorithm. So if you need need to use the nested for loops and you, if you need, if you use n, for loops in a nested for, uh, formation, the comp complexity is really high and that's not really advisable. Hence, uh, if you declare arrays as a uh, n-dimensional array, it is generally uh, better to avoid or to not to use n-dimensional arrays. Two-dimensional arrays are the maximum that are uh, usually good enough for, for most of the uh, applications. Uh, if you're, for example, using images, images are basic and colored images, they are basically three-dimensional arrays, uh, and uh, you can actually store them in C++ using the three dimensions as well. However, generally, I, I'd say that it's not uh, advisable or preferable to use a three-dimensional arrays, uh, as uh, they require uh, the, the complexity goes at the time, and the space complexity is very high for the three-dimensional arrays. Uh, uh, so, in that sense, uh, you'll not see a lot of applications with three-dimensional arrays. However, in this particular scenario where we are working, uh, we can actually, uh, uh, you must at least know that the n-dimensional arrays do exist and they, are, they can be used for certain cases. And the way you can access them, the way you can use them, the way you can declare them is exactly the same as that of a, a two-dimensional array or a one-dimensional array, except that the dimensions are higher and you need to put a separate index for accessing the uh, next dimension. So with that, uh, our lecture on multidimensional array also comes to an end and we are kind of done with the lecture. Now I'll move on to the summary of what we have seen in this particular lecture. An array is a structured data type with a fixed number of components of the same type. Uh, notice the word fixed here, right? So it has a fixed number. And the other thing is that it has the same type. So components are accessed using the relative positions in the array. And uh, what I mean by relative positions is basically the index of the component, which is which starts at zero. The first element is at position zero, at index zero, and the last element is at position n minus one, where uh, n is the size of the array. The element of a one-dimensional array are arranged in the form of a list, so it can it forms a particular list, right? So that's a one-dimensional array for you. An array index can be any expression that evaluates to non-negative integer. It can this includes zero or higher, but it is it must always be less than the size of the array. Otherwise, we can observe the array index out of bounds error. The base address of an array is the address of the first array component. When passing an array as an actual parameter, we can use only its name. It is automatically passed by reference. So that's the only possible option. 
uh, and we cannot use the m percent sign right so the m percent sign before uh, an array is not allowed a function cannot return an array type value so an array can never be returned uh however the difference between c++ 11 and the previous version of c++ is that c++ allows auto declaration of variables it also allows if you remember the iterator type uh, access for for loops the range for loop uh, access as we call it here in the lecture we see the examples probably in the code next uh, in c++ c strings are null terminated and are stored in character arrays commonly used c string manipulation function includes str cpys for string copy uh, str cmp for string compare and str length for getting the length uh, and you need to remember that c strings are basically the same thing as character arrays except that they end with a null uh, the c strings have an extra element which is null and uh, the character arrays do not have that null at the end so uh, parallel arrays are uh, arrays that are of the same size and they hold related information in a two dimensional array the elements are arranged in a table form like in a matrix and uh, to access an element of a two dimensional array you need to a pair of indices you need two indices one for the row and one for the column uh, once you get you access it by row basically then it gets you all the columns if you access it by columns uh, you actually get all the corresponding rows uh typically in functions uh, you know if you remember all uh, arrays all two dimensional arrays are passed as row based uh, or row processed uh, arrays in row processing a two dimensional array is processed one row at a time in column processing a two dimensional array is processed one column at a time so this is something that is there so with this my uh, the lecture on chapter 8 comes to an end we'll now see some codes and some examples on chapter 8 next